Hello drummers and other creatures. In this video, we're going to be looking at pea soup sounds, a nice open hi-hat sound that we play, usually an eighth note in length. I recently made a couple of videos about barks, which tend to be shorter, stabbier sounds that would be associated with a sort of 16th note length. I know it's all relative, but by and large, um, you'd play barks on E's and R's, and you would play pea soups on the ands or on the numbers on the the downbeats or the upbeats of uh, the eighth note pattern that you're playing. Um, so let's have a quick listen to some pea soupy stuff. to restrain myself there from playing the crash. It doesn't contribute anything, does it really? Anyway, that was your pea soup. It's an open hi-hat sound that happens usually about an eighth note in length. A uh, long pea soup. It's in the sound. Pea soup. Bark. Fast. Pea soup. A longer sound. A very, very common uh, sound to hear would be pea soups on all the ands in a four to the floor groove, which would be a disco beat. Uh, it's very common to hear pea soups on the, the end of four at the end of a sort of funk beat, um, this kind of thing. But let's look at the mechanics of this first. Uh, how do we obtain the open hi-hat sound? Well, obviously, I'm going to open the hi-hat with my foot, and I'm going to release it for the exact amount of time that I want, and then I'm going to close it again. I know that's a bit obvious, but you can think about how that would work if you, let's say we think about a bar of 2-4 just to make life easy for the time being, we're going to count one and two and, and I'm going to open the hi-hat on the and of two and close it back on the one coming back to the beginning. One and two and two and two and two, okay? So we've got a sound where I raise the foot at the initial count that I want to open the hi-hat on, and then I lower my foot again, I close the hi-hat uh, firmly, I want it to close. T pea soup. Dead, right? So, I would recommend having a little bit of a go with that. Notice how the foot goes up to open the hi-hat as your hand is going down to play the cymbals. Notice how the foot then closes the cymbals afterwards after a little moment of pshh. You don't need to spend hours doing it, just do it a few times to get your brain stimulated to be aware of what's happening. Next, let's put some normal hi-hat strokes in there, closed hi-hat strokes, and I'll just start off playing the uh, tip of the stick on top of the cymbals, and notice that to get a good pea soup sound, usually dipping the stick down a little bit and getting the shoulder to play the edge of the cymbals gives you a nice sound with a bit of a tack to it, but you can also try opening the hi-hat just playing the tip of the sticks on top. So let's start with the tip of the stick all the way, and then I'm gonna produce the open sound by dipping my stick down and playing the edge of the cymbals. Okay, here we go, just a bar of uh, four eighth notes, two four. And so notice, again, your foot going up, and then when your sticks are playing along with that, the hi-hats close, and at the same time, the stick is playing a stroke on the hi-hat. Obviously, another option you might have is to play the hi-hat on the edge all the way through. So, experience that. Try it just a little bit. You're trying to connect with the mechanics of the thing. Don't have to get obsessed with it. Next, we're going to add the bass drum uh, coincident with the open hi-hat sound. So again, if I'm playing this on the end of two, I'm just going to play the bass drum on the end of two with that. Uh, 
And this time, I've got my right foot going down and my left foot going up at the same time, but all the while, my right hand is down, down, down. Rebounding the stick, really. Okay, now, again, you may want to just isolate that and think about that a little bit. Okay, now, now that we've played a coincident bass drum note, let's play the bass drum on the one of our uh, two-beat little uh, pattern here so that we open the hi-hat on the end of two and then um, play the bass drum as we close the hi-hat. So the first example with the bass drum on the and meant the bass was going down and the hi-hat was going up, but this time if I play the bass on the one, that means both feet will be going down together, like this. Finally, let's play the bass on the and of the two and then on the one as well. So we've got the bass drum going down with the hi-hat going up and then immediately following the bass drum is going down and the hi-hat is going down at the same time, feet wise. Now, once you feel comfortable with that, you can add the snare. And we'll put the snare on the two, and then we're going to open the hi-hat on the, the end of two. Um, you can start whichever way around, but I'm, I'm just going to start by playing the bass on the one and the open hi-hat on the end of two, but no bass coinciding with that. So this. Next, let's play the bass on the and of two, but not on the one. Am I doing that right? No, let's try that again. Next, I'm going to play the bass on the and of two, but not on the one. And then let's play the bass on the end of the two and the one so we get that flowing bass drum open hi-hat together and then both the feet go down at the same time back on the one. Now the next thing to do would be, well, in my logic anyway, you can do this any way around you like, and once you get the general principle, but the next thing I'd like to do is I'm going to experience playing the pea soup sound on the two. So it's going to be at the same time as the snare. I'm not going to bother to play the bass at the same time. Just now, we're just gonna play the snare and open the hi-hat at the same time. Now here we've got the left hand going down and the right hand going down, but the hi-hat, the left foot in my case, going up. Two and. Next, let's put the next hi-hat stroke in afterwards. And now all the eights. And let's put the bass drum in. I've negotiated between the hands. Now my bass drum is going to go down on the one. It's not really going to get in the way of the two. Hopefully not anyway. Again, pay attention to the way your foot goes up. Both hands go down, but then the right hand in my case is going down and then the foot's going down. So you've got this whole interaction again happening. Uh, hands down, foot up, then foot down, hand down. 
I said it already, don't have to spend hours on it, but it can be quite handy just to let your brain register that, okay? So we've done the two, the and of two, now let's look at the and of one. Uh, this time we have the open hi-hat happening with my right hand going down, my left foot going up, but then both of my hands are gonna go down immediately afterwards with the left foot, okay? So again, uh, the limbs will negotiate with each other, and when you first start out with this, you might find that you can intuitively just do this stuff and it sounds okay if that's the case for you, super duper, but a lot of the time it's useful just to work through the, the negotiation a little bit more gently. So let's just try and go uh, eighth notes and hands only. Sorry, my left foot has to operate though, doesn't it? And again, let's put the bass drum on the one. Let's add the bass drum on the end of one as well. So I've got the bass going down, down, but the foot is going up when the second bass drum is going down. Show, don't tell. You can experiment with any bass drum pattern you like, so maybe uh, I'll change that to be the uh, bass on the one and the and of two instead of the and of one. So this time I'll go back to playing the open hi-hat without a coincident bass. See what happens, try all the options. The last one we're gonna do is open the hi-hat on the one. Again, this time, in most cases, we're gonna be playing a bass on, on the one of a groove, so we're gonna keep the bass going now on the one, and let's just see what happens with that. And how about play the bass on the end of one as well? So we've got, again, that combination of the bass going down while the hi-hat is going up, and then both feet going down together. Now let's play the bass on the one and the end of two. And feel free to experiment with that until you feel that you can spontaneously open the hi-hat on any one of the counts that you like. And that pretty much wraps that up. That's your introduction to the pea soup. Have a go with that. Learn how to play, as I say, until you can spontaneously open the hi-hat anywhere you like in the groove. If you find this interesting, if you found this useful, please let me know. It, there, there's more to explore on this topic. So I could do some follow-up stuff on this, how to develop more ideas with your pea soup sound. Uh, meanwhile, please be aware of the fact that I'm a drum teacher, and I, well, it, hopefully so anyway, but you can find me uh, by looking in the description box below, and if you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help with any aspects of your drumming, let me know, get in touch, we can have a bit of a chat, and uh, see if there's something I can do to help you along your drumming journey. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, that's super useful to me, and hopefully it's good for you to be alerted of any new videos that I make. Uh, make sure you click the thumbs up while you're at it if you enjoyed this. Now, I think that'll wrap things up today and you can go off and practice.